Hey everybody, this is Michael DeSellis from New Hunter Church of Christ in Mechanicsville, Virginia. And like we said, we're going to be talking about seeking today. Today's scriptures come from, or today's scripture comes from Matthew 12. Hmm. Oh man. Matthew 12. Um, sorry, Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12. That's known as the Beatitudes. Happiness you can find in strange places or in different situations. Always remember that. Okay? So when we look at the word... Oh my goodness, what happened here? Why did it do that? Well, that's no big deal. I'll just click it again, and then we'll get back to where it was. I don't know what happened there. Okay. This is coming from the Sermon on the Mount, but we're going to read the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds of people, he, he went up to them, and he went on the mountain, and he sat down there with his disciples as they came along with him. And he began to teach all of them by saying, Blessed are those who recognize that they are spiritually happy, uh, helpless, and the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Now I'm reading from, just to let you know if that sounds a little strange, is God's Word Translation. It's God's Word Translation who I'm reading from, so it sounds a little different, you know, that's fine. I just want to let you know. Uh, blessed are those who mourn, meaning cry, for they will be comforted. Blessed are all those who are gentle, and they will inherit the earth. Blessed are all those who hunger and thirst after or for God's approval or righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are those who show mercy and give mercy towards others. I'm going to go ahead and add that there. Uh, for they will be treated mercifully. Meaning, if you forgive, that's part of mercy. We'll talk more about that here in a bit. Blessed are those whose thoughts are pure in their heart, for they will surely see God. Blessed are those who make peace, or those who are peacemakers, for they will be called God's very children. Blessed are those who are prosecuted or persecuted for doing what God has approved has approves of, approves of them to be doing. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to all them. Number 11. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and slander you. Okay. Okay. Lie and say all kinds of evil wrongs about you because of me. But here's a promise here. The last part. Listen to this. Rejoice and be abundantly glad because you have a great reward that is in heaven. It says, for the prophets who lived long before you were also persecuted in, the, in these very ways. All right, so that's what we see. That's how it opens up. Let's go to God in prayer before we start today, this morning. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day, Father God, that we're able to come here to assemble at New Hunter Church of Christ. Both online as well as here in person as physical members, the body of this Church of Christ, and that we'll learn and grow together and be able to be drawn near to God and be able to know that God loves us and can help us. Even through all kinds of situations, we can find happiness if we just look. Thank you, Lord, and help be with me, the messenger, the preacher, evangelist. In Jesus' name, wonderful name, I pray. Amen. Yeah, all right, let's go here. The pearl is one of the most precious. Of all gems. This is a miracle of nature that occurs. But where does it actually come from? Well you might say. Well it's produced by the lowly oyster. Okay. That's rather an ugly looking creature. But inside. Both inside and out. But the oyster actually has. Little. In the way of. Chameleon in this, like it can blend in with its surroundings. It doesn't change colors, but it can kind of camouflage itself with the sands and things and the ocean on the floor. It says that would suggest that the beauty that resides inside, okay, 
says you can find blessings in strange places or in situations, different situations. All right, let's look more here, here, where we talk about this. Now, Jesus proved this very truth to us of this very statement that was made just a little bit ago in, spirit, in the spiritual realm when he preached what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, This sermon begins with the familiarity or the familiar word, bless it. In modern translations of the Bible, it has often used the words happy or fortunate instead of the Beatitudes, wait a minute, instead, okay? Now, instead of saying blessed, it would say happy, or it would say, like I said, fortunate, okay? But blessed is really the word we want, because that's the most closest to the Greek, all right? So the Beatitudes are not a series of commands here, no, not at all. But they're rather blessings, or fortune, or happiness, okay? They are descriptions of the kind of person who will receive these blessings, of who we are as Christians. When we are Christians and we're children of God, these are the kind of blessings that we do receive. Okay. They also identify a series of qualities that produce happiness, even though happiness is not readily apparent always all the time, is it? Happiness in our relationship to or with God. And Jesus now says that happiness can be found where there is poverty. Now the word translated poor, it means poor. Poverty means poor. Or is the word which denotes absolute poverty. Now this kind of poverty, I want to say, it describes is not what you think. It's not the condition of having little, but it's also, it, it's really, but or of having nothing at all. No. It is not this is not the kind it's talked about by financial poverty, no. No, Jesus kind he's talking about is the spiritual, what's in your mind. Okay? The spiritual poverty. You know what you have when you first come to Christ. It says we must learn to admit our need and to recognize the only one who can fill it or fulfill it. Jesus also says that happiness can be found where there is weeping. It says there is a hitting blessing in mourning. It says if our heart can be broken, then we know we have a heart. It says those who cannot mourn cannot either cannot even love a person either. It says it is better to have a broken heart than no heart at all. I agree with that wholeheartedly, don't you? Now, Jesus goes on to say that happiness can be found where there is submission. It means when you're honoring God, when you're obeying God, that's being submissive. That's where you're showing submission. All right, so to the modern mind, meekness is an equality to avoid. Of course, to modern minds, because they think that means weakness. But no. Meekness is not for the faint-hearted or timid or weak, just like I said. No, it's for people who are spiritually mature. Meekness is something you get as an attribute of spiritually maturity. Jesus also goes on to say that happiness can be found where there is hunger, not a physical hunger. Okay, This hunger is referred to here is not, like I said, like the rumbling you get when you don't eat a meal. You know? No, but it's the... It's the yawning and the the yawning hunger that you have, you know, that results from depravation, you know, depravation, or where you really want to seek out God's truth. It is not literal hunger here that's being mentioned. It's like poverty was not literal, of course, but it is a hunger and thirst after or for God's righteousness. Now look at point number two, happiness in our relationship with each other, in the church and even outside the church in our communities of where we live. Jesus goes on to say that happiness can be found where there is forgiveness. Says most will agree that mercy is a blessing, okay, when you receive it. 
Jesus says, blessed are the what? Merciful. That means if you forget people, then Jesus will forgive you. If you don't have the ability to forgive, then, then Jesus won't forgive you. That's pretty much what that's saying right there. So if you can show mercy by sharing and being a person, a forgiving person, then other people can forgive you and then God will forgive you. So that's part of the blessings of beatitude there. So Jesus goes on to say even more that it says that happiness can be found where there is sincerity. It means like when you say you're sorry, when you do your actions, you really mean it. You really mean it, folks. You're not just going through the motions. We're not just going through the motions. You know, you're really doing it. Not just an act here. To the non-Christian, see, they, they do not believe that the pure of heart are blessed. They don't believe that at all. But to the Christian, a Christian knows the wonderful secret. That purity carries along with it its own reward. All right? It is a lifestyle that brings healthy and what? Contentment. That's what Paul talks about, refers to often. Happiness can be found where there is conflict. Okay? Jesus says, Blessed are the what? Peacemakers. For they will be called the children of God. It says, You should notice here that it does not say, Blessed are the peace lovers. You know, that doesn't say that. It says, if we dare to make peace with people, then we will be given the greatest compliment that a person may ever know on this earth. It says, we will be called sons of God. And that's very important, folks. Jesus also goes on to say that happiness can be found where there is mistreatment. You know, everyone wants to be liked, accepted, and wants to feel wanted. It is our nature. That's our default nature. It is not possible to please everyone, though, however, especially if you are a Christian. You know, if you're a Christian, a person who lives a genuine Christian lifestyle can be a real nuisance to some people. You know, persecution can be a character, you know, builder, though, even though that happens to us. Through persecution, it can make us a more effective witness in our work and to other people that we live our daily examples by. Now, in conclusion, I would like to say, well, that's the picture of happiness that God portrays to us through the Beatitudes that are found in Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12. It says, life, how do you like it? Do you like it? I want to ask you, do you like it the way your life is right now? If you don't have to accept it, it says, you know, but sometimes you may find yourselves asking a question. Is there something really more here to this life than what I'm going through currently right now? Sometimes you may find yourself looking for a different kind of happiness, which is really the wrong kind that you're seeking. You want to look for God's happiness, like we talked about in Beatitudes. That's what you want to look for. It is at such a time that you may need to start looking for happiness where you least expect for it to be. Now, to receive the blessings of God, we must accept a different set of priorities in our lives, each of us, and look in different places than what the world would look at. Okay? says, you know why? Of course you do. And it should be obvious quite to you by now. That happiness is found in strange places and in different situations. Let's go to God in prayer and meditate for communion. Dear Lord, thank you for this time we come together, that we had a service dealing with Beatitudes. To remind us that we have blessings that are in store with us. Twelve blessings that you give us as attributes as the Holy Spirit is in us will show on the outside of us our maturity and our real true life Christhood that's in us by the Holy Spirit denoting the Beatitudes, that we can share that with other people through our everyday daily examples in life, and that we can be more abundant and be drawn closer to Him by it. By our example, we can also bring other people to Christ through our example. Thank you, Lord. Help us prepare our hearts and minds for your communion. In Jesus' name, pray, amen.
How y'all doing? Let's get here with communion. If you have your cracker with you, and you have your juice with you, grape juice is what we're using here. You can get Kool-Aid or grape soda if that's what you have. If you have like cracker, get an unlimited unleavened, which means no yeast. That represents his symbolic flesh, his presence. That's really what it represents, not the flesh, but his presence being with us. The Catholics think it's real flesh, but we're not really eating real flesh when we take communion. We're actually just eating this to remind us that Jesus is always present with us, not just in communion, but throughout every moment of our lives. But this is a reminder of what he's done for us on the cross to solidify that. And that's what the blood does. It represents that this blood can cover all your sins, every sin that you've done, that you committed. And that blood is covered through baptism in Jesus Christ. You can't have communion unless you've been born again and been baptized by being baptized under the water in the baptistry by by the authority and power of a preacher or someone that has baptized you under the water through baptism. Not sprinkling, not, not ramtizo. Sprinkling is ramtizo. We want baptizo. That's where you're immersed. Ramtizo means sprinkling. But we want baptizo. Immerse. That's what Paul talks about. Baptizo. Immersion. If you've been sprinkled, you weren't baptized correctly, my friend. So that's why you need to do it right. Because there are a lot of denominations that do teach that false false doctrine. You need to do it the way Paul and the way Jesus described to do it. And that's baptizo, not ramtizo. It's immersion. All right, so... Disciples were given this bread, and they passed around. Jesus said, this is my flesh. That means I'm presently with you. you know, don't focus on the flesh literally so much, but know that I'm reminded that I'm with you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's partake it together, shall we? And likened to the same thing with communion. He said, this is my blood that has been shed on the cross for all your sins, so that you can be, that your sins will be covered and be washed away. As long as you remain faithful and continually to pray for forgiveness daily, this covenant will seal and will remind us that that is a promise that why Jesus died on the cross for our sins, so that we can have the same covenant and protections as Christian believers who have been baptized in Jesus Christ. Let's partake this, shall we, together as it was passed around in the disciples as it is to us today. Let's partake. Yeah, Lord, thank you for everything that you do, and thank you for the time to be together. Let's hope that people will donate at this time of Christmas coming up. It'd be nice if some donations would come in. Help that more people would come here physically to worship with us. No, we don't have a nursery. No, we don't have a baptistry, but we have other churches that will help us. You know, but the thing is, it doesn't matter, because this is a small church. It's a house church, and therefore, we'll have those things eventually as we grow into and get our own building. We will have those things. But right now, that's how how all churches started. We're in homes. A lot of people today are so spoiled when they go to church because they expect everything to be there. But what they forget is in history that all those things when churches started weren't there, Lord. So pray that people will understand that. And when they come here, they'll understand that because they'll see that this is what really happens as a result of church. Thank you for everything that you do. And please bless us and bless us tonight as we go into a church ministry for tonight. Dealing with how to talk to your kids, chapter 4. And um, help us finish up Revelation on Wednesday. And Jesus, in your wonderful name, I pray, amen. See you next week. Please subscribe down below and please donate. Thanks a lot for all those that have. And uh, really, I mean that, folks. God bless you, and I love you. I'll see you here in a few hours All right, for our Talking to Your Kids series of lessons that we've been doing. All right, see you later. Bye.